In this problem, we're going to figure out the differential amount of work and also the total amount of work later. But this, for this first part, just the differential amount of work it takes to uh, create a spherical, solid spherical charge of radius r and a total charge of q by slowly taking an infinitesimally small little chunk of dq, which I'll write here, a little infinitesimally small chunk of dq, taking it and then smearing it across um, the surface of the uh, of like a little snowball of the charge. So starting off with just a tiny amount, taking a DQ, smearing it across, and then doing that again and again and again until you eventually turn it into this big old chunk right here. And the way you give that in, in, in spherical coordinates in any kind of uh, an infinitesimally small amount or in every incrementally small um, amount that we get, we're just going to go ahead and call that R, right? So at any given point, it's going to all grow about some distance r. And then, um, basically, we're going to try to figure out the work at any given point. What's the infinitesimally small amount of energy that we put in whenever we throw that little dq in there right now? And that's what we're figuring out right now. But before we move on, just to make this problem a little bit easier, instead of calling this uh, little q, I'm just going to go ahead and change the, um, the value and call this big q. And that will make sense a little bit later right now. So our goal is to write this in terms of things that we're given, which is just um, R, like big R, and then um, big Q, and then little R right here. Because we're eventually going to integrate little R just to get everything in terms of Q and R. So moving back over to this infinitesimally small um, dQ, we know that work is defined in terms of potential, which is given some sort of potential that's given off by a system of charges, the amount of work that you have to do to bring some amount of charge into that system from infinity is equal to that potential that was given off times that charge that you bring in right here. And the charge that we're bringing in is dq. Now, we get no, the next point is to rewriting that dq in terms of things that we know. So we know that dq right here is equal to the density of the charge that we have times the differentially small volume that makes this thing up, right? And then the volume that that makes that up is equal to, I'm just going to keep writing the density right here before we move on to too small. So we know that this uh, this density, if, if we take this dq and we smear it across right here, the, the differential volume of this is equal to, in terms of sp spherical coordinates, is equal to 4 pi r squared dr, right? So that would be like the triple integral of uh, in spherical coordinates, but just basically stopping at dr, right? So evaluating the phi, um, the phi and the, and the, the, theta direction right there. So we know that's that infinitesimally small in terms of things that we already know right here. So next is that we gotta figure out what is the what is the charge density of this dq? Well we're only putting it onto this surface right here the same amount of charge density as this charge density would be eventually right here. So now if we move on over here and we go ahead and solve for that charge density we'll say that that charge density is equal to that volume that we have, right? Is equal to, sorry, equal to that charge, the total charge that we're going to have on here divided by the total volume. And the total volume of that sphere is equal to 4 thirds uh, pi big R cubed, right? So the density that we add on to this sphere right here should be the same charge density as that we'll eventually have up here, right? Because we're eventually going to get to this bigger charge right here. So we can go ahead and make that substitution over here. So we'll go ahead and throw that in there. Let's see here. So it's uh, 3 fourths big Q pi r cubed and then times r 4 pi r squared dr. All right, so we'll go ahead and leave that there. So that is what our dq is actually equal to. And you know what? We can go ahead and make that substitution in here and just bump down to the next line. It's equal to v, and I'll make it into a big parenthesis. It's equal to uh, 4 thirds big Q. Let's see. Pi r cubed 4 pi r squared dr. 
Okay, so the next part is evaluating what the electric potential is for this, right? So the electric potential for this is, let's go ahead and put the next equal sign. When we look at the most general form of electric potential, I'll go ahead and write it in blue down over here. So the electric potential is equal to, of course, uh, the Coulomb constant, or 4 pi epsilon naught, times the charge. Oh, that's where I'm going to bring in little q. Little q is going to represent the total charge that we have at some intermediate step right here. So some charge, as we're, as we're slowly growing and smearing this snowball charge, growing uh, more and more, until we get to this point right here, it's going to have some sort of intermediate radius of little r and some intermediate total charge of q which is the total charge that we've added so far until we've gotten to that point. And that's what that little charge here is. And then also, going back to the, uh, the potential right here, so it's equal to um, the, the charge that we're, that's currently into the system and the radius that we're bringing in, the, uh, or the distance that we're bringing in some intermediately charged onto the sphere right here. So at any given moment, we're bringing in a charge of dq onto the surface of this uh, intermediate little, uh, in, on this intermediate sphere at some distance r away, right? And so, of course, our next step is to rewrite these in terms of things that we know, which would be q and um, big R, and we can also leave little r because we're gonna uh, change that later. So we know that this this q right here can be rewritten in terms of our density that we have right here. We know that the uh, uh, the Q can be rewritten as the, the volume, which I'll just write as tau because V is already taken in uh, electrostatics, is equal to the tau, the volume, times the charge density. And we already know we can rewrite all this in terms of things that we know. So we know that the volume of this circle right here is equal to 4 thirds pi little r cubed, because that's the current radius at any given point times the charge density, rho. And uh, before we go make that any crazier, I'll just go ahead and rewrite the rho here in terms of what we have up here, which is, uh, of course, big Q over 4 thirds pi big R cubed, because again, it's big R because we want it to be the same charge density as this thing right here. Because if it was a different charge density, by the time that we got up to the total uh, radius, it would be a total, it would be a different charge, so it needs to be the exact same charge density of what we're eventually building into. So I'll go ahead and go ahead and throw this back over here. So what we have is something kind of large. I'm gonna go ahead and scoot this equal sign over here because it's gonna get a little bit busy. So I'll rewrite our potential: four thirds pi epsilon naught, uh, one over r. And then this will be the charge that I rewrite right here. So it's 4 thirds pi r cubed times the charge density, q. We can go ahead and do 4 thirds q on top pi big r cubed and parentheses. So this is all the electric potential which we rewrote right here. And now we'll just bring down this next portion for the dq. Yeah, this problem is a great exercise in, in like really understanding what exactly is the potential in the dq, kind of isolating these things. So I think it's a really good problem. Now we can go ahead and just cancel out things and just do some algebra. So we have a 4 here, a 4 here. A pi here, a pi here. We can change this uh, r, cancel out this r with this r right here, so that becomes a 2. We have uh, pi right here. What else? We have a 4 on top, we cancel out with this 4. And I think there's a 3 here, 3 here. Just want to make sure I don't miss anything. Um, always double check. All right. I think we should be good. We'll go ahead and rewrite what we have. And if not, we'll 
if I miss something, it's no big deal. We'll just rewrite it on uh, the next step. So I'll just go ahead here. We have a three and a four here. So I'll bring the three and the four. Uh, let's see here. There's an epsilon naught and a pi here. So I'll just keep it in the same order what we've been writing it as. Uh, we'll bring the q squared out. And all that's left, I guess, is the, uh, let's see here, all that's left is the r to the 6th, and then little r to the 4th. r to the 4th, r to the 6th, and don't forget the dr. Okay, so that is our infinitesimally small amount of work that we have to put into, and that's an infinitesimally small amount of energy that we have to put into the system to bring this charge Q in as we slowly uh, make a bigger and larger and larger snowball until we get to this point here. Now this next step is finding out what the total work is to make this snowball of charge of radius R and charge of total, total charge big Q, which I rewrote from, from little Q, by the way. So, of course, if we have some... Uh, expression for the work and then in terms of different differentials all we have to do is just re just integrate over the appropriate limits so the appropriate limits for this would be from zero all the way out to r to get to the r that we want over here so we'll just rewrite this in terms of big r so to make this a little bit easier i'll just throw all the constants out in front so we'll do three Q squared pi epsilon naught big R comes out and then all that's left is an integral of R to the fourth dr which of course is big R to the fifth over five we'll just do some algebra and I can already see from the previous problems that we've been working this is in line with our previous results, which means that uh, everything's good. So this is the total amount of work to make some sort of spherical charge of a radius big R. So it's this is a different way of doing it. Uh, so we can just add this add this method to our quiver of methods to in order to build uh, some sort of charge here too. So the biggest thing is knowing exactly what is the potential that we're using and what is the dq that we're using.